On a guess, lend me your ears. Long as our Fevremont suffered, without a true monarch to guide her and her people. Decades have passed since last His Majesty Erland sat atop the Draken throne. Long have we endured, yet it has not been for naught. At last, the bell has tolled on the age of the Consul. At last, we may celebrate the coming of our rightful ruler. The return of the Sovereign. <laughs> My word! Such an inspiring visage! Your Majesty shall have my eternal fealty. Your no Majesty, oh how long I have awaited this moment. Behold, before you sits the rightful inheritor of the Draken Throne, chosen by the dragon as its enemy. Behold and rejoice! Fortune has delivered us our savior at last! At last! Praise be, for only the Sovereign's guidance can lead us true. All hail the Sovereign! All hail! Let all present Pledge your allegiance to the Sovereign. Let us be united in the hope that our liege's reign will near end. Long live the Sovereign of Vermont! Long live the Sovereign! Arisen, thou who wouldst slay the dragon, if thou seekest to behold this world in its true aspect, abandon thy reason. Cast aside thine heart and thy life both. I ask thee to demonstrate thy will, for naught but thine ambition can alter the course of the rivers of fate. Now, which one of you was it? No need to be shy. I've just got to take down a record of your name and face. Come on, step forward. I ill like that look in your eyes. Tis queerly brazen for a pawn. Most of your kind have eyes blank as a cadaver's. Mayhap tis only natural seeing as how you rise from the dead. There's aught different about you, though. Could it be that you fear death just as we mortals do? Worry not, Vessel. Three days here, and you'll be longing for death's sweet embrace. Come along, you feckless dullards! Yeah. 
about, get a move on! Do your injuries pain you? Pray, do not overexert yourself. This is no place for one of your ilk. Tis harsh beyond measure. Even you ought not anger the overseer. Let us proceed to the site. Adventuring's a grand way to wind up a cadaver. Time for you to get to work. You are prepared to work. Then you all begin by carrying stones out from the station in the back and bringing them here. The vicinity is quite cluttered. Pray leap! Oh, oh, oh. A job well done. Now the next step is to... What is this commotion? Perhaps we ought to investigate. Escaped. Oh, you! Get back here! Quickly! This way, Arisen! Come this way. Let us flee.
No one could survive a fall from this height. Not even a pawn. Don't just stand there! Shoot it down! It's getting away! Bring it down! Bring it down! Go now, lost soul. Learn all you can of this world you must protect. Pray, keep your distance, Arisen. Worry not for me. The brine may swallow me whole, but I will not perish. There is a stone not far from here, known as a rift stone. Pray, seek it out. If you're truly the Arisen, then our paths will surely cross again. Right. What happened here? A griffin appears one moment and falls the next, and now you stand before me. Was it you then? The one who was riding on its back? It is a wonder you survived. Accompany me to the stronghold. We'll treat your wounds and hear your story. Where exactly is this jail you say you escaped from, anyway? I've never heard of such a place. There's certainly naught like that here in Vermont. Could it be you were held in the neighboring country of Batal? Nay, I suppose that's unlikely. We've been estranged from Batal ever since the war. It is difficult to imagine any citizen of Vermont being sent there. Fine! Goblins! Let's take up your weapon, sir. You'll be needing it. Where are you 
going. I'll not force you to receive treatment, but I'd at least like a word. There are oft items to be scavenged from the bodies of monsters and their ilk. If you're not squeamish about picking at their bones, that is. I count that a blessing. All I know for sure is that tis a beast e'er more fearsome than a griffin. One need only look to the miserable state of the village of Mel to see that. We can but hope that the sovereign will rid us of the where do you think you're going? You can't just run off now. Welcome, Arisen. We pawns have long awaited your arrival. What is this? The pawns? They bend the knee to you so readily, but then... No. Surely you cannot be the Arisen. You seek the Riftstone, do you not? We can take you to it. Pray. Come this way. Before you stands a rift stone. Tis a gate by which we of the Pawn Legion may cross o'er into this world. Pray, summon your pawn. Simply paint with your mind's eye the loyal attendant whom you would have serve you. This world is connected to innumerable other realms beyond the rift, which pawns, such as myself, are able to traverse. My kind is duty-bound to serve you, Arisen, and to use the knowledge we glean in these distant worlds to your benefit. I myself look forward to traveling alongside you and using my experiences beyond the rift to enrich your adventures. Well, I'll be a pawn summoning before my very eyes. You truly are the Arisen, then. Strange. I thought the Arisen was in the capital. Surely there's only meant to be one Arisen. Fine. This is all beyond my ken. The Watchhead would know what to do, I'm sure. Though, as luck would have it, he's away. I suppose we'll save any further questions till the Watchhead returns. You're free to do as you like afore then. What? You've no memories, you say? Mayhap you could make for Melv, then. It was set upon by the dragon not long ago. The Arisen is said to bear some deep connection to the dragon. Should you be Arisen, mayhap you'll recall aught of import there. Hail, Arisen. Pray, ask aught you wish to know. I shall answer, if tis within my power to do so. Very well. May fortune speed you on your way, Arisen. I'm dead on my Look, Master, a tread. Go now, are you? You sure that's a good idea? You seem rather unwell. You ought at least rest for the evening. There should be a spare bed in the lodgings yonder. 
Only don't go rushing off before you're ready. Take it from me. You're better off resting while you have the chance. Hoi there. You seem well tired. Tell you what, you can stay here tonight free of charge. Alex, my pa always used to say, there's naught a good night's sleep can't fix. Not much else I can offer, I'm afraid, but you'll find all sorts at a finer inn. Aye, being armed is better than being defenseless, even if you're untrained. Still, it is worth devoting yourself to a vocation if you can. Oh, but you should stop by the inn in Melv if you get the chance. No hard feelings if you prefer it. They've much more to offer. I have no issue falling asleep, even at this time of day. Hey all. You a soldier? It would be a surprise to see you arrive in one piece if not. Hordes of monsters have been plaguing this area of late, you see. We've had to start sending out new recruits to cull them. Is that so? Who went yonder? Lachlan. But I dare say he'll fare all right. Aye, I expect he will. Who was sent out that way then? Accardo. To be honest, sir, I'm a little worried for him. What? Weren't harpies reported in that area? The lad can't handle those beasts on his own. This is the first I'm hearing of it. Fie! I want to go to his aid, but we can't just abandon our posts. Say, you seem stout of heart. Would you be willing to go in our stead? It isn't far, only a short ways out from the main gate. You've my thanks. Anacardos as well, I'm sure. Mastered that attack, we would be. Is that all of them? Yeah, you have my thanks. I do not believe for a moment I could have slain those creatures without your help. I've only just enlisted, and when I thought this could be the end of me, I. You saved me this time, but I won't always be so fortunate. I'll have to train harder till I have the confidence to face such beasts on my own. Well, I'd best be heading back, but I'll be sure to let my superiors know of your good deed. I hope we meet again someday. I suppose we'll be wanting to report back now. Behold the state of the village. It is a sorry sight indeed. The dragon truly is calamity incarnate. Mayhap a walk through the streets would help jog your memory. When the arisen appears, so too does the dragon. It is an immutable truth of this world.
That is most unfortunate. But it doth not release thee from thy fate. Can you hear me, sir? Sir, stay with me. Thank goodness. How are you feeling? This is the second time I've watched over you like this. Isn't it? You do not remember? Then have you forgotten that you protected me from the dragon's flames? You withstood the fire in my stead and were well and truly charred. It was terrible. I had thought your life Forfeit. I could not hear the beating of your heart. But you hung on and by some miracle survived. Arisen, I'm afraid I don't understand your meaning. Does it have aught to do with why you were taken to the castle? They said twas so that your wounds could be treated. Though I fear you have no memory of this either. I am of the Border Watch. Someone with arisen like abilities came to this village torn in tow. 
Has he come for you? We are to part so soon, then. Mayhap you will visit me again someday. Till then, take care. Everson. Ah, excellent. You must be the one. You match my soldier's description. I'm glad I found you. The ruler of Vermont, currently convalescing in the capital, became arisen here in this very village. If you claim the same, then word must be borne to the capital. I dispatched a missive before coming here, though I doubt the matter can be settled without your presence. Would you be willing to accompany me to the capital? If you truly are arisen, you will be received with open arms. Oh, but forgive me. I scattered my soldiers in a bid to find you. I would not depart without them. We shall have to wait till they are reassembled. Come to think of it, Sir Leonard was asking after you as well. Mayhap now would be a good time to speak with him. Last I saw, he was having a drink at the inn. A simple conversation oft reveals what a week of searching never could... Whom shall we speak with first? We could make the fruit robberant ourselves, or simply purchase some at Rune's apo- Well met. You're the one who saved Ulrika's life, aren't you? She told me all about it. It was a very brave thing you did. I'm in your debt. Ulrika's as good as my daughter. Here, consider this a small token. Now, tell me, are you registered with a guild? Perhaps you already know this, but registering with a guild will grant you access to specialized training, which comes in very useful when pursuing a vacation. Well now, that won't do. You need only speak with the innkeeper to register. Go on, it will only take a moment. If there is aught you wish to know of vacations, mayhap I can advise you. Should you dedicate yourself to a vacation, you will find that new paths to master will open up to you over time. Try them as you like. Very well. There is no wrong choice in any case. It is entirely up to you which vocation you adopt. But I shan't take up any more of your time. Pray be well. Always sets me to think. Oh. Ah, you've returned. Good timing, too. I have questions for you. First and foremost, will you accompany me to the capital? My thanks. Are you ready to depart, or do you need some time to prepare? Good. Then let us be on our way. This battle couldn't have come at a worse time. I only hope our victory is a swap one. Hold here a moment. I shall bid them open the gate. Who's that you've brought with you, Watchhead, sir? An arisen, by all appearances. An arisen? Another pretender, you mean? I see the Sovereign's ascension has done little to stop such charlatans from plying their trade. It is uncertain. This one commands the loyalty of the pawns. What? Impossible. You know as well as I do that there can be but one arisen, and he's up in the palace. I'm well aware of how preposterous the idea is, thank you. However, as I do not believe it my place to rule on such a matter, I would make my report to the capital. If the claim is false, we will be rewarded handsomely for our trouble. If the claim is true, however, who can say? All's been arranged. Come, let us pass through the gate.
Is everyone all right? More marks of the dragon's fury. Its rampage must have weakened the earth here. I am attentive and loyal, and prefer to remain by your side. In battle, I shall follow your lead and prioritize support. It will be an honor to serve by your side. What's this? We're trapped! seem I misjudged you. I had taken you for another force arisen. Goodness knows we see a lot of them. Yet the value you showed in coming to our aid has dispelled such thoughts. Here, take this as a mark of my trust. Give it to one of the sentinels stationed at the gates to the capital, and you'll be granted an audience with Captain Brandt. You're free to make your own way to the capital now. I see no need to keep you under constant watch, and I'm sure you'll breathe a little easier as well, I. Of course, if you'd rather continue to accompany us, you are still welcome to join us on the Oxcart. Tis your decision. Ah. Here's the cart now. Do you intend to join us? Very well. Board the ox cart and we'll be off. An ox cart ought to make our journey easier. One hopes these carts offer comfort commensurate to their cost. We're setting out. Jump on. I was informed of your coming would be arisen. Captain Brandt, this individual summoned a pawn through a rift stone. Several witnesses can attest to it. Though I admit I had my doubts at first, it would seem this is no mere deceiver. This one's not a bad sort. Saved our hides on the way here. As decreed by the great will of our world, there can only be one arisen. That arisen now resides within the palace. Indeed. He is our sovereign and the rightful ruler of Vermont. It follows, therefore, that this ruffian before us is naught but a pretender. You must submit to questioning. 
If you value your life, you will not attempt to flee. I shall conduct the interrogation myself. Stand watch outside. I beg your forgiveness for my insolence, Your Majesty. If the Queen Regent had learned of your existence, I fear your life would have been in peril. I had no choice but to treat you as a pretender, lest my actions draw suspicion from watchful eyes. Then you have truly lost your memory? In that case, mayhap I ought to explain the situation before we proceed. You, and no other, are the Sovereign the only legitimate ruler of this kingdom. Some days passed, you confronted the dragon in the village of Melv, whereupon you became arisen. The people rejoiced, for our true liege had finally appeared, and in Vermont's long years of council rule. Yet, not all celebrated your coming. Your arrival would have robbed the Queen Regent Gisa of everything. During the time of the previous consul, she acted as a queen in her own right, ruling the palace as she saw fit. And just after the consul's passing, when twas all but certain that her son would take his father's place, word reached the castle that the Arisen had been found. To Deesa, your Majesty's very existence is naught but an obstacle to her own family's continued prosperity. The assassination of the Arisen is an impossible feat for mortal hands. Thus, Disa chose to abduct Your Majesty while you recovered from your wounds, in order to rob you of your memory with a fell curse and sell you to Batal as a slave. Following that, she prepared a replacement to serve as the Sovereign in your stead. A mere puppet. However, with your Majesty returned, I have no intention of twiddling my thumbs as Deesa plays her games. I shall devise some plans to further our cause. Pray, visit me a night in the tavern that we might discuss them. This one's cleared of all suspicion, and has my permission to remain in the capital. You are to trouble the good sir no further. Welcome to the Star Drop-In. We serve all manner of fine ales here. Shall I pour you a cup to start? Your Majesty, your timing is impeccable. I just thought to call for you. Tis not a matter for prying ears. Pray, let us speak out here. As I informed you when last we spoke, the palace is filled with the Queen Regent's sycophants. Should Deesa denounce your majesty as a false arisen, few would elect to doubt her. Yet if we are to prove your identity, I believe there is no occasion more suitable than the coronation. It was delayed so that the Sovereign, that is, the False Arisen, could convalesce in the palace, but the date has now been set. The central players in the court ought all be in attendance. It would be a fine opportunity to display your Majesty's power. None would be able to deny that you are the true Arisen then. There is a problem, however. Entry only select members of the nobility and citizens who have contributed greatly to Vermont's continued prosperity will be granted entry. If your majesty is to be counted among them, you will need to attend to a number of tasks. Pray, allow me to summarize them for you. You will need to infiltrate the palace to gather evidence of Deezer's misdeeds. I hesitate to ask something so dangerous of you. Yet I fear we have few other options. I have attempted to do the same through my own channels before now. Though, I have yet to uncover so much as a whisper of her plots. 
Would that I could undertake the task myself, but my station prohibits me from reckless action. What say you, Your Majesty? Might I ask this task of you? I shall ensure that the door to the Queen Regent's office is open between midnight and dawn. Pray use that time to conduct your investigation. Who's there? Pray, keep your voice low. It wouldn't be good for either of us if someone was summoned to come check on me. Could it be that you have come to bring Mother's schemes to light? I, I am Sven, the son of Queen Regent Deesa. Mother has been acting rather strangely of late. I thought to investigate the matter whilst she was away. I gather tis the same for you. I can't imagine what else would have summoned you here. What? You mean to say that you are the true Arisen? That the Sovereign currently residing in the palace is a pretender? Could Mother have had a hand in that as well? Regent Kin Sven appears to be missing from his chambers. Have you seen Me? Him? No, sir. Then start searching, you fool. Should aught befall the Regent Kin, tis us who'll answer to her grace. Forgive me. My absence seems to have made this rather more difficult for us. You ought leave the palace at once. This room turned up little of interest, but I have a mind to look into this further. I shall send word to Captain Brandt if I discover aught you should know. I'll head out first and speak with the Sentinels. Use that opportunity to make good your escape. There is much we ought to tend to, if we are to strengthen your majesty's claim as a true arisen. How fared your mission? Was there aught suspicious to be found in the Queen Regent's office? This scrap. It was part of a letter, and from Batal no less. This alone can prove little. But tis clear that Deezer's schemes run deep. To think, Deezer's actions have weighed even on the mind of her own son. Tis a surprise, but a welcome one. Deezer is a, the doting mother before the Regent King. If Regent King Sven is willing to aid us by drawing Deezer's focus, we may be able to gain here more useful information. You have done well, Your Majesty. Though I am limited in the aid I am able to offer, I bid you... Phasers. Now there's a name to remember. There is much we ought to tend to, if we are to strengthen Your Majesty's claim as a true arisen. While examining the palace ledger for evidence of the Queen Regent's misdeeds, I made a curious discovery. For some time now, it seems, she has been diverting a veritable mountain of gold to the daily purchase of sweet crown flour. What's more, this inexpedient spending habit is recorded to have begun the very day on which Arthur, the would-be arisen, appeared on the scene. This cannot be mere happenstance. I can only conclude that these sums are passing into the hands of Arthur himself. Yet, tis strange, for sweet crown flowers only grow on the eastern edge of Romond. I dare say, t'was not an item chosen idly. Mayhap this knowledge will guide us in our pursuit of the false sovereign? Tis a frail hope to be certain. Yet all the same, I would ask that your majesty venture to Vermont's eastern edge and probe into this young man's origins. I am glad to hear it, for I cannot shake the feeling that uncovering the identity of the false sovereign is the key to unraveling Deezer's scheme and securing your enthronement.
You there. Are you looking to enter the village? You'd best go elsewhere, friend. What's wrong about this place? There's no business to be had here, that's for sure. I don't know about you, Master, but word of a curious village does more to spark my interest than deter it. Is that who I think it is? Hey, you. I take it you're the outsider my lord mentioned? How do you know to expect you? I couldn't tell you. Why not ask him yourself? You'll find him in the manor atop the on-hill. Hmm, greetings. I must say, I'm impressed by your intuition, sir. You found me out far sooner than most. I trust you are enjoying your sojourn in our fair village. If you have any questions, ask away. I should be glad to aid you. If aught about our humble village seems strange to you, that is easily explained. For it is here that thieves are instructed in the skills they require. To begin with, those who wander into the village are evaluated for their potential aptitude. Of course, you are no exception. That you stand here now is proof you were deemed a worthy candidate. Which is to say, you have my approval as the thiefmaster. Is there aught else you care to ask? Arthur, you say? Hmm. I've lived in this village many a year, but I can't say I've heard of someone by that name. My apologies. Is there aught else you care to ask? You're curious what I know of you? Quite a bit, I should think. Naturally, I'm not the only one. Our village has its own network of spies and informants, you see. And your title tends to make you stand out among the rumors we collect. You're the second arisen to come to Vermont, and you've allied yourself with Captain Brandt against the Queen Regent. In response, she's... Oops, I mustn't say another word. Don't misunderstand. I'm no ally of the Queen Regent. I merely strive to maintain neutrality in political matters. Those who deal in information must ne'er align themselves with a particular power. Such is our village code. Is there aught else you care to ask? Aye. Take care, then. You... This rumor has been troubling me ever since I first caught... Nice seeing you about. You the outsider? My lord spoke of you. Come on, follow me. I have something real nice to show you. Oh, you've a sharp eye. You wonder how I know? For starters, it isn't just me. The entire... Not mysterious about it. With our sources. And that... But don't worry yourself. I'm actually on your side. Can't offer you any help, though. Village code and all that. Still, I suppose... I could give you a bit of advice. If I were you, I'd try a hefty wager riding on you, cuz. Don't let me down, eh? All that obscure advice, only to depart with nary a word of explanation. Shall we try doing what she did to us, then? This letter is as suspicious as they come. We must find someone who could explain its true meaning. Mm. 
Is there aught else you'd care to ask? Beg pardon? Why would you ask such a thing? A letter. Oh, -ho. you've made quite the discovery. Brass means imitating someone in Thieves Cant. This letter means to say someone's taken on such a request. Naturally, I can say nothing as to the who or what of the arrangement. I'm sure you understand. Is there aught else you care to ask? Aye. Take care, then. No one's coming to assail us. May we cannot accompany you there, Master, but fear not. You'll find us here when you return. You made it after all. Guess that means I win. Oi, you lot best pay up. Dear me. You didn't disappoint, did you? You've done well. Seems only fair I answer any questions weighing on you. Go on. I figures you'd want to know about him. We're supposed to be neutral. Ordinarily, I wouldn't say a word about what... But I suppose I can tell you, the situation being what is. His real name is Dora. He was one of us, but he's been exiled. We had no choice, see? After he went off to play the false arisen, we're men and women of shadow. Center stage isn't our place to stand. That's why he was cast out. He'll near be part of our village again. That all you wanted to ask? For all this, Dara was in line to become the next thief maester. But he failed. Took a massive injury to the chest during the trial. So the title fell to me. That's when he went off, saying he used the scar in his chest to pose as the Arisen. And what a scheme that turned out to be, eh? Now he gets to sit pretty on the best seat in the kingdom. Still, you'd have a hard time proving that he's not who he says he is. He's a wily one, that Dara. Always was careful not to leave behind a shred of evidence. But we can't have him thinking that he gets to go off and enjoy a peaceful life in the lap of luxury after breaking our code. Methinks he needs something to remind him of the debt he owes us. Here, this should do the trick. Now, as to the Maester's teaching, not sure you'll be able to use it to its fullest potential, but I'll show it to you. Have you divined aught of the false sovereign, your majesty? This appears to be a bill calling for the arrest of a man named Dara. But hold a moment. Does this man's countenance not bear an uncanny resemblance to that of the false sovereign? Hmm. I see. If your majesty is certain that the two are one and the same, then I am convinced as well. However, I'm afraid this paper alone does not constitute sufficient proof. Ah, but of course. I surmise your majesty intends to post the bill and invite suspicion. A clever plan. The Queen Regent will be forced to deny any connection to our new sovereign, yet will be unable to remove the bill from the public eye. 
Furthermore, Tool serve as an attestation to Dara's existence, which shall remain an undeniable truth till the man resurfaces. And all the while, the doubts lurking in the hearts of the citizenry will continue to deepen. A clever ploy indeed. I shall attend to this matter personally. I've no doubt that this bill will prove its worth in due course. You have my gratitude, Your Majesty. Your aid has been invaluable. I bear word from Regent Ken Sven, Your Majesty. He espied the delivery of a suspicious package to a man named Allard. A minister who happens to be one of the Queen Regent's staunchest and most powerful allies in the palace. From the pains he took to remain on scene, it is plain that Allard wished this delivery kept away from prying eyes. That alone is reason to suspect a connection to Deezer's schemes. We must get to the bottom of it. The Regent Kin intends to call Allard to his chambers come nightfall. He bids you to use this opportunity to search the Minister's chambers and see if there's aught to be learned. What say you, Your Majesty? Are you willing to undertake this task? I shall ensure that the door to the Minister's chambers is open between midnight and dawn. Pray, use that time to infiltrate and uncover aught worthy of suspicion. Hoping there'll be no trouble today. Have no fear, Master. You are the Arisen, yes? They follow me! It is best you move along. Should one of the other guards espy you, I will be forced to play my part. What business could be so pressing that I must be summoned at this late hour? I would not presume to know, my lord. However, it must be a highly sensitive matter for the Regent Kin to request a private audience. Oh, perhaps the boy has finally grown wise to the benefits my favor can bring. He might just be his mother's puppet, but at least he knows what's good for him. M my lord, if someone were to overhear... Oh, unring your hands, you fool! As if anyone in this palace would dare say a word against me. Now, if Wilhelmina calls, tell her to await me in my chambers. I will return presently. Surely none more important than this. I speak of the ascension of the Sovereign. Indeed. But that, Your Grace, would be better discussed in the presence of your mother. I know this sigil well. Tis the crest of the neighboring country of Batal, a land with which Vermin has no official dealings at present. Let me see. It reads, True to our word, we offer you the power of the Godsway. Pray make haste in securing Melv, that all might be made ready ere our plans are set in motion. A meager clue, to be certain. Though, it is clear that the Queen Regent conspires with Batal. This does not bode well at all. Though the political situation is stable at present, much blood has been spilt between Vermund and his neighbor in the past. I fear such a partnership would only portend the drawing of more. 
At any rate, Twisima's search has led us to only more questions. Chief among them, what is meant by securing Melv and this God's way? I will investigate these matters as best I can. In the interim, Your Majesty, should you have time to spare, might you make for Melv? Only once we have gleaned a fragment of the Queen Regent's plot, can we begin to thwart it. And ere it slips my mind, pray, take this. Perchance it will help speed you on your way to Melv. Queen Regent Deesa appears to be working in concert with this Phasers fellow. But what precisely is their aim? There is much we ought to tend to if we are to strengthen your majesty's claim as a true the citizenry have called upon my soldiers to cull monsters that plague the land. I dare say, it would be a fine contribution were you to accomplish these tasks unaided. What say you? Might I ask for your cooperation in this matter? I thank you, your majesty. There are three locales that have seen significant trouble of late. The first is Trevo Mine, to the northwest. We've had reports of goblins swarming in great numbers. Next is Half Village, west of Burnworth. I believe soldiers have already been dispatched to call an infestation of Saurians there. Finally, there is a call for someone to locate a group of soldiers tasked with delivering freight. They were last seen crossing the second bridge on the eastern edge of Vermont. It is our duty to bring the beasts low. I foresee naught but success on the path that lies ahead. Protect the shipment! Steal yourselves! Cut the fiends down! Don't let them touch the shipment! How did this happen? We must defend the cargo! They're a tenacious lot. Shall we proceed into the depths? We best be prepared to make our own light before we proceed. What's that then? Splendid. Oi, you there! If you're fit to fight, give us a hand. Pray, lend us your aid. We're in your debt. Scatter the goblins! You've a strong arm. The goblins are well routed. You have my thanks. It was a simple patrol mission, till we walked into their ambush. Those cursed things caught us entirely unawares. I don't know where we'd be if you hadn't come along. I pray you'll let me repay the favor, if ever there's a chance. Would you mind coming over here? Oh, you've come to a dangerous place. Scaly beasts make this their den. We've been dispatched to cull them. A small force ventured inside, though I've seen neither hide nor hair of them since. Seems the battle is hard won. 
I'll not stop you if you wish to explore, but don't look for my aid if aught goes awry. I can't count the number of meats and fish that have gone to rot in my pack. You'd think the smell would remind me. Fine. There's a haze over my eyes. Can anyone hear me? We need help. I don't want to fall here. Oh, damn lizard. Is this one to draw my last? I'm it! You'll not live to regret this. Oh, well, I ain't right, right where it is. You're not one of ours. Have you come to save us? Forgive me. I cannot seem to walk of my own accord just now. Would you aid me in reaching the entrance? You went in there to save my fellow soldiers. Well, I underestimated you, friend. I shall send word of your deeds to the captain. You've done well this day. I thank you. We'll see to the rest of this mess. You need not trouble yourself further. You've done a fine job culling those monsters, Your Majesty. Tis common knowledge among the people that t'was you who delivered them from danger. The number of those who seek out this tavern in the hope of an audience with the Arisen grows by the day. Should you continue to display such valor, the day will soon come when Deesa can no longer deny your presence. And ere it slips my mind. Pray, take this. Tis a... Excellent work, Master. We have fulfilled our duty to satisfaction. As a reward for your Majesty's efforts, you have been invited to attend the coronation. You will, of course, require raiment befitting of the occasion. I would ask that your majesty return once you've procured such attire. My body, he refuses to obey me. <laughs> There's a voice within my mind. It commands me, sways my very will. Sways your will? Could it be that the gods sway? We must quit this place, your majesty. I fear our plans may fall to naught. Let us return to the tavern. False Sovereign commanded the pawns at the coronation, proving his own powers arisen. According to Regent King Sven, the pretender was wearing some sort of lavish necklace at the time. I imagine this artifact is the godsway mentioned in that letter. A chance tis a tool that grants power akin to that of the true arisen. It would do much to explain the events that we have beheld afore now. Alas. Unless we find some way to unmake this Godsway's power, proving your majesty's legitimacy shall be difficult indeed. Pray, allow me time to search for a way forward. I shall inform your majesty when I have prepared a plan of action.
Of all those who serve the Queen Regent, there is but one who I have no doubt will lend his support. I refer to Waldar, a magistrate. Many a time has Deezer demanded Waldor amend the Code of Vermont to her own benefit. And many a time has the Magistrate refused her, for he is loyal to none but the spirit of the law. As a result, he now sits in a cell beneath the palace. Our laws dictate that your Majesty is our rightful ruler. Thus, as the staunchest supporter of the law known to the palace, I'm quite confident that Waldor will be willing to vouch for your majesty. What say you? Might you be willing to aid me in arranging the magistrate's release? I've prepared a means for you to enter the palace dungeons. Pray, take this. This mission demands the utmost secrecy. Prithee be cautious, your majesty. Should you be discovered, I will be unable to lend aught in the way of aid. And have you come to release me from this jail? Who are you? No. Uh -huh. Then we are presented with three options. Or, Deezer's arisen is false, or you are lying to me. Have you proof that you are arisen, as you say? Ah, they say the arisen's breast bears a wound akin to the dragon's claw. By that mark, t'would seem tis true. This reminds me of a happening 148 years ago, during the reign of Regent Alphonse, a man named Crusoe appeared and claimed he went before the people, insisting that he, and not Regent Alphonse, was the true arisen, the one fit to lead them as their ruler. And what befell him, you ask? Ha! Crusoe was discovered to be a liar, whereupon his head was liberated from his shoulders on the spot. Aye. I dare say your arrival portends another beheading, but whose will it be, hmm? Escape? But why? Here, I spend my days perusing the code and deciphering old texts. I can devote all my time to my own interests. And I need not turn my ear to Deezer's absurd demand. Tis a paradise to me, this cell. That said, if you know of a place with a mountain of tomes I could delve into, I might rethink the matter. Tell me, does that ring any bells? I suspected as much. Then we are done here. Leave me be. The magistrate seeks a place to quench his thirst for knowledge. Where might we find one, I wonder? My master told me that the slums hide many secrets. Mayhap we ought to investigate for ourselves. What's this? Come to admire my sculptures, have you? Ho <laughs> ho! To think my eminence as a collector would reach in the ears of the... If only my collection were complete, I'd fain allow you to inspect it. Alas, the sculpture that I commissioned to be its centerpiece is yet to arrive, and would wound my pride to have you behold my collection ere it is made whole. If your curiosity shall not be denied, however, Mayhap you'd consider paying a visit to the... The man's home is located in Bak Batal. You... A place with books likely to entice Magistrate Waldo, you say? Not springs to mind, I'm afraid. Kendrick of the Gracious Hand is versed in many things. Perchance he knows of such a place? Oh, 
Well met, Sir Arisen. Might I trouble you for arms for the poor? Many thanks. May fortune smile upon you, kind sir. Well met, Sir Arisen. Might I trouble you for arms for the poor? Many thanks. May ah, hold on a moment, Sir Arisen. Perchance you would be... You see, one of the children we care for here at the Gracious Hand has got... Malcolm, his name is. He's a steady lad. I can't imagine he would have run away. This building's very old. It could be that he's found himself in some strange corner of it. Might I impose on you to search for him? Let us begin by gathering information. Tis as you say. Hmm. Malcolm's been really into exploring of late. Just the other day, he was going around telling anyone who'd listen about how he was an ox hip. This looks as good a place as any. Malcolm. All he's doing of late is picking. Don't know why he bothered. My prayer is surely. Is. Is Malcolm alright? We were supposed to go exploring together. But I overslept and he went without me. Wish he'd woken me up. I was really looking forward to going down into those vaults. Oh no. I wasn't meant to tell anyone that. We'd best report back. Vaults, you say? By my knowledge, they were sealed off. Ah, but you mentioned rubble, aye? And perhaps the lad found a way through. Come! I fear there's not a moment to lose. Pray, follow me, and quickly. I believe this is the place to which the children were referring. Look there, a hole. Could he have passed through here? There is naught to be done but have a look for ourselves. The passage ahead looks small, but we may be able to squeeze through. Let us make haste. A short jaunt can quickly become a journey, till before you know it, you're bruised up and all out of curatives. Dare say that's part and parcel of the adventurer's trade. Malcolm, thank goodness you are unharmed. You have my eternal gratitude, Sir Arisen. Now I can breathe freely at last. Sir Kendrick? You'll never believe what I've found. It's just up ahead. Books, sir. Books, books, and more books. It's like some sort of secret workshop. Truly? Perhaps we ought to take a look. We ought not lose sight of our guide. It is no great shock to me. Are we leaving already? <laughs> Bother. Heavens above! Isn't it amazing? And I found it. Me. It is quite a find indeed. Is this some manner of archive? Why, I've ne'er seen so many books. This collection must be worth a fortune. It is a veritable treasure trove of wisdom. Might I ask that you not share the existence of this place with others, Sir Arisen? We cannot allow the knowledge accumulated here to be misused or mistreated. We ought to entrust its care to someone worthy, someone who can appreciate its true value. Pray, tell me if you know of such an individual. 
As for you, Malcolm, I forbid you from telling anyone else about this place. It'll be our little secret. Understood? Oh, but... However, in exchange for your silence, you may come and go as you please. Let's investigate this place's secrets together, eh? There's quite the collection of tomes. I'm sure I'd be seeing stars, were I the scholarly sort. I quite agree. Well? Have you found some place I might sate my scholarly curiosities? Oh, to think such a place existed. Guide me outside, then. If you can deliver me from this pit, I ought to be able to find the rest of the way on my own. I, this should be far enough. My, if you truly are arisen, then I swear to someday repay this debt I owe. Words may be wind, but there's naught else I can offer you at present. Pray visit me if you've the time or inclinate mayhap the knowledge I've gained reading tomes of Eld could be of some use to you. It seems Magistrate Wardor has been safely delivered from his cell. The man's dedication to justice shall doubtless be a great boon to our cause. Mayhap it would be prudent to visit the man on occasion and avail yourself of his vast stores of wisdom. He might have knowledge that could benefit you on your travels. Now would you be so kind as to return the key I lent you? I thank you. Pray. Take this. Consider it remuneration for your majesty's efforts. If we are to strengthen your majesty regarding the matter of the God's way, I fear there is naught to be done, save for your majesty to venture to Batal, where you might uncover the false sovereign's secrets directly. The sigil upon that letter from some days past bore the crest of the Batali palace. Yet official dealings twixt Batal and Vrumund are suspended Passing through their fortress will prove a difficult task. With such hindrances in mind, I thought to prepare this. Pray, take it. Few may pass through Batal's fortress, save Beastron merchants. With some coin, I was able to convince one such merchant to grant us that entry permit. It ought guaranteed passage through the border checkpoint, but alas, tis intended for a Beastron. You shall have to act the part, but as to how that should be done, I am shamed to say I do not know. It will depend upon your majesty's ingenuity. Merchant, eh? Have you an entry permit? Hold a moment. That cart has priority. Lord Phasus is come! Open the gates! So, 
You seek to enter Batal, I presume? I'll have to check your permit. Oi! This isn't yours! Do you take me for a fool? Present your own permit, or I'll have you thrown in jail! The day grows darker with our every step. Where we do not fall prey to enemy ambush. That's what enough! Find any a ladder, is it? How convenient. After you, Arisen. Who are you supposed to? Well met, sir. I would fain. Got any tales to live? The people. Her Majesty, Empress Nadinya, has long been troubled by this custom, but a practice so ancient isn't easily overturned. Many are unhappy about the existence of this tavern, even though it lies outside the capital simply because it was established as a place for pawns to gather. I know not what manner of person you are, but if you would aid me in my efforts to make the people of Batal more accepting of pawns, I would be glad to offer you a residence permit. It is a bargain more than fair, for those who hold such permits may remain in Back Batal without having their activities questioned. What say you? Glad I am to hear it. Simply show it to one of the sentries, and you'll be granted entry to the capital. Oh, and if you encounter any troubled Batali along the way, I'd be- They are harsh in their persecution of the pawns, but were they to be aided by the targets of their ire, mayhap a few stubborn hearts would soften. A simple plan, I know, but is the only one available, or so it seems to me. I bid you good fortune, Sir Arisen. I admire your dedication, Master. Is no small feat to hone one skill so fine. Uh, there is always room for improvement, after all. Sir Fulvio, the artist whose service Sir Clark commissioned, is residing in Batal. Shall we go and meet with him? If you would be so kind as to follow me, I shall take you to the one you seek. The vanguard is yours. Lead on. Search laboratory, which can be found here in the town. However, you would do well to first travel to the altar of the Tal coast and seek a man named Am. For as a researcher of this laboratory, he will doubtless be able to answer many of your questions. 
Follow me, if you would. There will be a reckoning for this. I shall not suffer others to mimic our master's power. We have reached our destination. Huh? M what in the... Where did you come from? Did Clark send you? Oh no, he did, didn't he? I'm sorry. I I'm really, truly very sorry. I haven't slept a wink, I swear it. Well, I suppose I might have fallen asleep once or twice, but... It isn't as if I've been lazing about. I simply haven't been able to devise any good ideas. I tell you, this arrangement has been an encumbrance on my mind from the very beginning. While I am glad that the old man appreciated my talents enough to commission me, it doesn't change the facts. I can only depict subjects that I've seen with my own two eyes, which makes things rather difficult, given the task of... Say, you appear a rather strapping sort. Would you be persuaded to bring me to a griffin? It will be well worth any trouble. Clark shall pay handsomely to see this done. And you'd be doing me a great boon besides. I've heard aught of a griffin's nesting place. I shall await you there. Do keep in mind, however, that you must needs drag the battle out if I am to complete my sketch. Of course, I, I could look as long as I pleased if you were to petrify the beast. Indeed, a beast frozen in place would be much more easily drawn. It is said that a famed sculptor of Eld used a Medusa's severed head to petrify her subjects before sketching them. Of course, I wouldn't presume to demand aught so legendary of you, Arisen. I only ask that you aid me in completing my sketch as best as you are able. Then I shall depart at once. Pray, meet me at the foot of the Guerco mountain range, east of the rest town. Can it be you are lost, Arisen One? The path to the dragon has many turns, but I can illuminate the way ahead if you so desire. You will find the path you ought to follow inscribed. Would you know the fate of another? This meeting shall not be... There you are. I was wondering when you'd show. Now, are you ready to aid me in sketching that griffin? Remember, you'll need to draw the fight out as long as you can. I must behold the creature from every angle if I am to coax it lifelike from the stone. Marvelous. Up we go then. Let us accompany Sir Fulvio and face this griffin. We're to be guided to our destination. Let's try to follow along. Positively splendid. I suppose that will have to do. I'll have to use my imagination for the finer details, I fear. But it should turn out well, all the same. Clark means to unveil the sculpture before a select audience. He asked me to extend an invitation to you as well. I will await you at his estate in Vernworth's noble quarter.
patrons, connoisseurs, friends. My humblest thanks for joining me here at the unveiling of my collection's crowning jewel. There is much more I should like to say, but the anticipation is apt to kill me should I stall another moment. Let us gaze upon the sculpture now. <laughs> my word! Would appear I overestimated your ability. How dare you claim my gold for a clumsy attempt such as this? You have shamed me and shall ne'er again know my patronage, Fulvio. Now gather your things and be gone from my sight! A dispiriting conclusion. It is a shame how the sculpture turned out. I do wish we had fairer tidings to share. I know Clark wasn't pleased, but that was the best I could manage. I shall strive to improve, and perhaps one day he'll think better of me. With the aid of Sir Kendrick and his helper in locating certain documents, I believe I finally grasped the true nature of this place. It was a royal library that was sealed off by a sovereign of some generations past. In a bid to pass the throne on to his own descendants, this sovereign attempted to consign our kingdom's histories to oblivion. Alas, it would seem that, no matter the age, the avarice of those in power is all but guaranteed. Yet, tis clear, it serves them not. Almost laughably so. The Sovereign's line ultimately fell to ruin, and now this library, so laboriously sealed, has been discovered. What can we learn from this? Those who make light of history are doomed to be crushed under its heel. Fine timing, sir. Fine timing indeed. I've need of your services, you see. My time in that tenebrous jail has only hastened the deterioration of my eyesight. I stare at the page, but the letters stubbornly refuse to take shape. Yet these old eyes might serve some use if only I could wear the spectacles I had specially made. Alas, they were confiscated at the time of my imprisonment. As I recall, Prisoners' possessions are held within the palace storeroom. It is a place to which few have lawful access, as I'm sure you can imagine. Though, as I hear it, masquerades are being held of late. Masquerades with a great many attendees, if you catch my meaning. Should you happen to enter the venue, mayhap you would find an opportunity to liberate my poor spectacles? What say you? Would you consider doing an old man a favor? I am in your debt. With those spectacles in hand, I might actually get through one of my tomes. Pray, infiltrate the venue and find the storeroom. You are my only hope. Ah, you've returned. Oh, my spectacles. Well done, sir. With these, I shall have no need to fear any letters, be they small or faintly scrawled. I shall learn aught I can that the day might come when I can repay this debt I owe you. Many, many thanks. Take this as a token of my gratitude. Tis done at last. What I wouldn't give for a rest. Our adventure shall be short-lived if we do not take time to mend body and mind after such journeys. You have my support. Hmm. 
Now I've lost the thread of my thoughts. Who are you? Uh, no, never mind. It is of little import. I'm searching for blue crystal shards. Find any, and I'll pay you handsomely. The bigger they are... Have you found any blue crystal shards? Is that all? Tiny fragments such as these aren't nearly good enough. Still, I expect I'll find a use for them here. Take your coin and be gone. Tis a god's swell. Well, to be precise, the crystalline substance from which tis made. By refining such crystals, anyone can attain the power of the Arisen. However, small fragments are meaningless. They cannot contend with the Arisen's power, you see. Speaking of which, should you find any large fragments, bring them to me, won't you? Though that might be difficult. We've scoured this area quite thoroughly, I should think. It is possible larger shards may have been mistaken for jewels and carried off by scavengers or collectors. Mayhap one such as the Oracle or the Dragonforged would be able to aid you in locating them. I can tell you no more than that. Since times of eld, dragon blood has been used to refine all manner of equipment. Remember, draconic blood flows through the veins of lesser drakes as well. Since time, remember, draconic blood is for ye to determine what that bond constitutes, be it a hapless fate or a curious boon. The Godswain, forgive me. But I've ne'er heard of such a thing. However, some years past, a sorcerer of Batal came to me seeking knowledge of the dragon, just as ye have. It appeared his intent was to alter the will of the world through mortal means. Perhaps there is some connection. Ye need not seek the dragon. It will... I make no mistake. The dragon will appear before ye when the time... Still, I suppose I can tell ye about a rumor I heard the other day. Apparently, a dragon was sighted in Harv village. Though after all, now that ye have been marked as arisen, the dragon ought next appear before ye at the appointment. So it stands to reason that e'en if a creature of draconic aspect and destructive powers did appear in that village, a mockery of one perhaps, but not the dragon true. The substance of which ye speak is formed of crystallized droplets of dragon blood. Worm's life crystals can be obtained not only from the true red dragon, but from lower drakes. They retain a measure of draconic power, and when used correctly, will bestow upon ye powers that eclipse the will of this world. Would you not prefer to have your loyal pawn with us on this journey, Master?
I knew you would come. Arisen, you seek answers, and you shall have them, if tis within my power to know them. Loath as I am to admit it, I know little of the artifact of which you speak, though I shall tell you aught I can. I sense a land soaked in warmth, a warmth akin to your own Arisen, to that of the power of the life you possess. Yet it now lies many fathoms below the surface of the sea, in a place unreachable by mortal hands. Though it is strange, for I sense also that this warmth grows ere near. It would seem a path will be open to you in time, allowing you to venture into the heart of this warmth, so like your own. Perhaps he who was Dragonforged can tell you more. Seek him out in Harv Village, if you would learn from him. About time you came along. I have a special tale to share with you today. Or so I'd like to say, but it is getting rather late. Best spend the night. We can talk again come the morning. Ah, good. You're awake. Look to the sea, my friend. Hard to resist setting out in one's boat with fair skies like these, eh? <laughs> I've told you about the sunken temple in the middle of the sea, haven't I? I, I'm quite sure I mentioned it. But I ne'er spoke of the man who resides there. He was such a worthy ruler in life that his armies safeguard him even in death. As he himself would have it, he was once entrusted with the task of watching over this world from the heavens above. Yet he tired of his duty and abandoned his perch in the sky in favor of founding a small kingdom on the ground. Alas, Though he was a just and goodly ruler, there is not a single person alive who remembers his name. Oh, it sounds unfortunate, but if you ask me, it is all a matter of perspective. It can be a blessing to forget, and I should know. In all my long years, I've never forgotten a single thing. I remember everything, every little detail. Would that I could forget some of it. <laughs> a lie it may seem, but a lie it is not. I speak only the truth, as come see me again if it pleases you. <laughs> I've tales aplenty to share. Heavens, Fend. I'd ne'er seen the like. I'd not known there were ruins in the depths of this cavern till the path appeared. It was magic, methinks. I should have liked to investigate if the place hadn't been crawling with monsters. I'll be needing sturdier arms than these before I head back in there, I fear. At any rate, I'd best report this discovery to my commander. I only pray North Grave shall come of it. So, another comes seeking to inter me. Yet your wicked schemes will avail you not, watching one. Time and again have you sent unto me your minions. Yet repel them I have, and so I shall anew till I might claim the true world as mine own. Why do you not draw your blade? <laughs> this bat... You seek not my death. 
Then you are not of the Watching One. I am Rothas, founder of the Kingdom of Vermin. And you appear to be a reason. Tell me your reason for coming here. God's way. Hmm. Speak you of those trinkets conjured by the wizards of Batal. Even from these depths, I have beheld the Batali scuttling about, gathering their fragments. It is a baleful, maddening act to transmute the fractured souls of Arisen into such frivolous baubles. Aye, that which you seek is a soul much like your own. Yet rarely will you find one intact, for splinters are all the remain of those pitiful arisen, who what the flesh may rot, the soul fragment. Yet power, power endures. And would seem the Batali seek to augment this power through their perverted Though to what nefarious end, I know not. Yet tis folly, the frolicking of children. Such a trinket could ne'er hope to fell the dragon, let alone the watching one. I know little of your intent, but I sense in you a powerful will. A will that urges you towards fulfillment of some great feat. I shall grant you this blade. It too is the soul of an arisen. Mine own, in fact. Refined in purest dragon blood. Alas. The ages have taken their toll. Tis as withered as mine own flesh. Yet, mayhap, the Batali's profane magics would be capable of drawing forth its late potency. If that is what you seek, Arisen, then go on to their stronghold. I believe tis there you shall find the means to achieve it. No, no, this is all wrong. What use are pitiful fragments such as thee? What we have achieved is sufficient to sway the pawns. But when the time comes to fell the dragon, I fear it may not be enough. Lord Phasus insists we shall succeed, and yet... Ah, a new hand, are you? Have you some business with me? Why? Tis an Arisen's. This... This is incredible. Arden, but why do you possess such a thing? Where did you obtain it? No. Never mind. 
All that matters is this. With this alone, I shall be able to craft a superior godsway, the finest of all created to date. I must make haste that I might deliver it to Lord Phasis even a moment sooner. But wait, no. I have not the Worm's Life crystals to restore it. Concern it all! You've not heard of them. They are formed of crystallized drops of dragon blood, and each fragment contains a portion of the beast's soul. It is a requisite component of the God's Way, which is formed when the souls of Arisen and Dragon are combined. Naturally, such crystals can only be obtained through the slaying of drakes and their ilk. Yet I am doubtful that Lord Phasus would lend me his forces when the ritual is so close. We've few enough hands as tears. <laughs> oh, don't be ridiculous. Do you even understand what you are offering? Worm's life crystals can only be obtained from drakes. But I suppose I am in no position to decline, even if tis a fool's errand. Lord Phasus is satisfied with the God's way as tis, you see. And as I can expect no support from him, you can ex- Though I suppose twouldn't do to send you away entirely empty-handed. Now, as I've said, Worm's Life crystals can only be obtained from drakes and their ilk. Seek one out and fell it, if tis within your power. All the better if it happens to be a lesser dragon. You would be solving two of my problems, then. It is clear to me that my fate is to aid you. Ah, but which dragon do you seek? The dragon that stole your heart shall appear before you when the time is come. If, instead, you seek the so-called Lesser Dragon, you would do well to pay a visit to Dragon's Breath Tower. If tis yet another dragon you seek, then perhaps you ought to search for it yourself. Your feet will guide you no less ably than any revelation on my part. Hail Arisen, allow me to join you in this trial. Yet however many I call, the emptiness refuses to fill. For these beasts are but crude imitations of the dragon truth. Sigurd, you're the current Arisen, aren't you? I pray you do not walk the same path as I have. Tis a style all my own. A patchwork of techniques, honed for the sole purpose of slaying the dragon. That is begging to be destroyed, but I'm not sure our attacks will reach it from here. You've returned. Have you obtained any Worm's Life crystals? You have? Incredible! That is no small feat. 
I must admit, I had not thought you much chance of success. Yet here you are. And this, this is precisely what I require to complete my work. I shan't delay. Come by again tomorrow. By then, I will have produced a god's way of unparalleled quality. Have no fear, Master. I'll fare all right without you for a little while. It is not our place to hurry the Arisen. Hmm. And who must... Sir Arisen? You've come... Sir Armhild, tis my pleasure to present to you the good Arisen. Come to aid us in apprehending the brigand who would threaten... Her. Well met. Your assistance is most welcome. Without our Empress to guide us, Batal has no future. Her magic... Indeed. We are well glad of your aid. May it prove unnecessary. Ere Her Majesty's supplications begin, I shall give you a description of our target. Pray seize the rogue, should you as we would, however. Prefer that this affair be kept quiet. Be not reckless in your decision, lest you Empress Nadinia shall commence her prayers any moment now. I would ask that you safeguard her with your life, should it come to that. O oh, Lambent Flame, we offer thee these words of prayer on behalf of our people. We ask that all be spared the horrors of the fell dragon. We ask that Batal may e'er prosper. Who are ye supposed to be? Fie! Are they on to me? Ah, oh, shot it! Apprehend him at once! That man there is the assassin! Nicely done, Sir Arisen. Let us inform Sir Ermhild of what has transpired. Oh, Your Majesty. Full glad am I to see you unharmed. The brigand has been captured. The chaos of the past few days ought to be behind us now. We owe this outcome to you, Sir Arisen. You cannot know the depth of my gratitude. Ah, yes, of course. Batal is in your debt, Sir Arisen. The same is true of you, Sir Manella. Your efforts were most admirable, considering your wound. Now that a measure of peace is returned to us, however, you ought to devote yourself to convalescence for a time. You may. The curative hot springs on Volcanic Island are said to be wondrous for healing. Go there. Very well, my lady. I shall leave presently, and return when I am fully recovered. Grateful are we for your most valiant efforts, Sir Arisen. I am proud to carry out my duty. Would that I knew more. Oh, it is finished. The result is even more sublime than I'd hoped. <laughs> I must deliver it to Lord Phasus at once. Though, mayhap. Now, I cannot leave this in your hands. I may not be fleet of foot, but only I can do this. changed my mind. You take it. Deliver the blade to Lord Faces. You ought reach him in time. Go now. Make haste for Moonglint Tower. There your journey will come to an end. One way or another.
Is this a challenge arisen to see who can keep pace? Let us endeavor to keep up, though we are less fleet of foot. is unfathomably enormous. I dare say a cyclops would be as an ant beside it. Indeed. And where is it bound, I wonder? It ought to be stopped, but it doesn't seem likely to heed our commands. Do not retreat soon. I fear we are all lost. We all press on, my lord. Mine's not the stone puppets, then. We move. It arose from the sea. What could have summoned it? Finish this. have their uses. It would seem the stone puppet has stopped. Have the wounded been tended to? Yes, my lord. Good. I trust you are prepared, Sovereign of Vermont. W will it really be all right? I I'm not about to be charred, am I? Fear not. 
You are in no danger. The dragon shall be under my control when it appears. Come. Let us press onward. Dragon, heed my call. Your will is mine to command. Curses. This arrival of the true risen is most inopportune. Sovereign of Vermin, the ritual must not be disturbed. Let not the arisen approach. You can manage that, I trust. At last, we may confront the pretender to your title, Master. I hope the man has made his peace. Arisen. Now, simply watch as this world's hollow and fruitless order is remade by my hand. The ritual is complete. The dragon comes. Behold! The Royce Dragon! By my power, the dogma of dragons is unmade. You could ne'er understand, Arisen. We must all be freed from the vulgar order wherein the dragon's existence determines all. Arisen, hast thou summoned the resolution to face me? Then answer me this. Why dost thou fight? Is it to reclaim thy flesh, thy stolen heart? Or is it to reclaim thy throne? I offer thee a choice. 
Grant unto me this life in my cause, and be gone from this place. Or stand and fight. Pitiable arisen. The time for thou to make thy choice is come. Show me the path thou wouldst walk. Go, and thou shalt live to claim thy coveted throne. Fight and thy life is forfeit. fulfill our charges. I as the dragon, and thou as the arisen. Climb upon me. We shall depart for our true battlefield. Pray, turn back. Leave now, while you can. You have strayed, Arisen. And for what? Lest you forget. You have a world where you belong. There, you are to fell the great evil in your path and rule the people as their sovereign. For that is who you are. And it is my wish that you should live out that life of purpose. The time has come for you to return. Go. My children shall see you there safely. Let us go home. Together. To a world under your rightful rule. To a world all your own. This is your will. Then behold, a world unmerciful, bereft of the benevolent hands that guides.
find it strange. But this is your world. The world to which you longed to return. Alas, if only you had chosen to become sovereign. At the end of your travails, you could have ruled over these lands in perpetual peace. Yet that world of limitless possibilities has entered. You stand now upon its remains, the vestiges of a world that could have been so much more. Innumerable wills have served to deliver this world from extinction time and time again. You alone have refused to carry out that great purpose. What you see before you is the consequence of your apathy. Behold. has failed to be chosen, and as to will ne'er be read, this world will soon cease to exist. In the blink of an eye, the sickle of oblivion will reap aught that you have known. I would advise you not to waste these last moments. Explore the remnants of this world while you can. Perhaps, in doing so, you shall come to see the truth, and know the wretchedness of the world unworthy of being chronicled. How shall you fare, I wonder? Will you endure in this world, abandoned and unprotected? No longer do I feel the probing gaze of the Watching One. Is this your doing, newest of the Arisen? I am he who brought the dragon low, and o'er its bones raised the proud kingdom of Vernon. Despite the magnitude of my feet, I was dissatisfied and sought ere greater heights. Till at last, I ruled the world entire. Thus did I come to know of the Watching One. The being by whose many eyes and ears no one or thing in this world. As to the purpose with which they watch, I know not. Yet I did divine one thing. This world has lain neath the Watching One's unwavering gaze ere the dawn of its history. I despaired at this discovery, for, if all is but a stage, did that not render my hard-won glories, my throne astride the world, mere spectacles for the all-seeing eye to watch? I... And I, the fool, exulting in my wooden crown. Do you understand, newest of the Arisen? This is why I sought to fell the Watching One. Alas, though I cut down all who seemed false, be they man or woman, human or beast, young or old, Indeed, 
My efforts led only to my own ruin. I was dubbed the Mad Sovereign, and by the hand of a new arisen, consigned to this place forevermore. Yes, I can only assume that you have achieved what I could not. How else to explain the changes I sense in the world? Ah, oh, what bitter gall that I cannot witness the outcome for myself. Falter not, newest of the arisen, for your path is just, and fading spirit though I am, I may yet summon those who can be of aid to you. I see you have returned, Arisen One. The Mad Sovereign has called, and so we answer. If you would save the people of this world from ruin, lead them here. For this place may chance to escape the coming destruction. I imagine the people of this world will welcome the tidings that there is a place of refuge awaiting them. Your pawn is nowhere to be seen, Master. But where would a pawn possibly go, leaving their own master behind? Feet up is as welcome as fine ale. Ah, arisen. You yet live. I suspected as much, given that your pawn still remains. One might hypothesize that your pawn is sustained by your vital essence. In any case, we ought to apprise one another of the situation. Is there aught you would know? Ah, yes. I trust it has not escaped your notice that the end of days is upon us. After you vanished, together with the Red Dragon, the seas rose to swallow the skies. T'was perhaps a month from that evil day when a new calamity befell us. A host of dragons descended from the skies and fell upon the land with fang and claw. Luz the Oracle called upon me ere you arrived. As she tells it, Melv and its environs have already fallen prey to the beasts. Tis surely only a matter of time before the rest of the kingdom follows suit. I found the poor creature collapsed by the wayside near Batal. Recognizing your pawn, I decided to take the ailing thing into my custody. I thought it possible that the Arisen's pawn might hold the key to making sense of all this madness. Alas, try what I might. Your pawn will not wake. Mayhap you will succeed where I could not. The pawn is, after all, yours to command. Indeed, then I shall take my turn. In your absence, I had hoped your pawn might yield me some information. But as you have returned, I would hear the truth from your lips. Tell me, Arisen, what became of you this past month? So following your plunge into the sea on the dragon's back, some mysterious presence reached out to you. Could that have been the world forged? Yet why would such a being linger in those fathomless depths? I can only speculate. And speculate I shall. This ought to prove a fruitful avenue of investigation. For that, I thank you. Now, if you can find a way to end this interminable slumber, your pawn is, of course, free to rejoin you. Oh, Master. How long I've slept. <laughs> Far too long, it seems. But, uh, worry not. Now that I am awake, I shall follow wherever you lead. 
I admire your dedication, Master. Tis no small feat to hone one's skills so fine. Uh, there is always room for improvement, after all. I cannot begin to fathom what happened during our time apart. Although I was wholly unconscious, I could still feel you arisen, like a heartbeat, warm and constant. I was relieved beyond measure to find that our bond remained unsevered for all that. It was an ordeal indeed, and there is much for us to ponder. But for now, we must find a means to forge ahead. There is little point in my leading the way if we haven't got what we require to hand. You've pushed your luck too far. I'll not take that from you. Pray calm yourselves, good people. I will have none of this squabbling. Sir Manella, you don't understand. This scoundrel's the one who started it. No, you don't understand. This is no time for the people of Batal to be quarreling amongst themselves. We shan't weather this calamity unless we can recall our common purpose and unite our efforts towards it. How dare you! Ah, Sir Arisen. You are returned, I see. With the world in such disarray, I could not stand to be away from my homeland. Thus did I return, to render what aid I may. I maintain order as best I can, but for every fire I extinguish, it seems three more are incited behind my back. But enough of my woes. What brings you here? You wish us to evacuate? Mayhap the idea merits some thought. After all, if we sit on our haunches, it is likely only a matter of time before we share the fate of Mel. Alas, the people of Batal are far from united in purpose at present. Should we proceed, unheeding of their divisions, I fear that our efforts would come undone ere long. With every soul at their wit's end, conflict is like to spark at the slightest provocation. As such, before we take any measures, I would have you walk amongst the people, Sir Arisen. Behold their plight with your own eyes. And should you encounter any discord, pray do aught you can to resolve the people's quarrels and assuage their fears. Such efforts will doubtless allow the evacuation to proceed all the more smoothly. As for me, my work here is far from done. Let us part ways for now and reconvene when you have accomplished all you can. Flared tempers are understandable given the circumstances. Let us aid in mediating the quarrels arising in Bagvatal. It is no great shock to me. Haven't you had enough yet? The so-called Forbidden Magic Research Lab appears to have been constructed rather recently. That does... Ah! You're just riding on your father's coattails! You slander my honor, sir! I demand a duel. This is no business of yours! Be gone! Now, now, Nara, let's not be too hasty. If we are to duel, we ought to have a witness. Otherwise, who's to say the victor fought with honor? Aye, true enough. Without a witness, either of us could simply kill the other, then disavow the use of any underhandedness. Well, sir, what say you? Will you watch over us while I take this scoundrel to task? This knave dared to slight my honor. He said my swordsmanship was hardly fit to wound a training dummy. The bloody nerve of him. <laughs> And I'd say it again. It was your dear father's patronage that made you a sentinel, not your own skill. You have my gratitude, sir. Let us delay no further. Come, Scario. How about you? Stay back! 
you get caught in the fray. Stand strong. No. Heal yourself. I, I admit it. I underestimated your skill. The loss is mine. Nay, it was I who underestimated you. I'd thought to score an easy victory, but you fought fair and capably. We owe you a debt, sir. Tis on your account that we've seen some sense. Were it not for your timely appearance, I'd wager this nonsense might have cost one of us their life. Indeed. Better to hone our respective skills than take up arms against petty slights, I say. It seems some things can only be resolved by crossing blades. But I doubt they'll quarrel again after this. My heart is light as a feather after that exchange. This looks as good a place as any. Oi! I saw it first. <laughs> Trust a flea-ridden hide to take it. Uh, why must I share with a fangless one? This is no more your food than Batal is your land. You there! You couldn't have come at a better time. Put this upstart in his place for me, won't you? Go on, lay into it. If that's what you think, why don't you mind your own business? All right, clear off. Pretty words shan't fill our bellies. You said it's bad to hurt people. Wow, thanks, sir. Say, Rakim, would you like some? I can't eat all this myself. Really? Thanks. That's mighty kind of you. If only our fathers could do the same. Oi, leave my kid alone. You're not some child snatcher, are you? Wait. You shared your food with them. I... Thank you, sir. As for you, Nomos, it would seem we were both but looking out for our children, eh? Oi. Mayhap we're not so different after all. And we've both our children fed. We've no reason to quarrel. I've had well enough of your nitpicking. I reckon the world would be better off without you. Oi, you! Don't go poking your nose in our business. This is between I. Leave off or we'll make you. Cut that out. So, but have you lost your bloody mind? Reckon you can just cut us down in the street? What's the matter with you? Eh? Fine, fine. We'll set our squabble aside for today, so bother up. Sir Arisen, I bade you assuage the people's fears, not cut them down in the streets. On account of your actions, word is spreading among the citizenry that any who squabble will be struck down. As such, the evacuation will likely meet with little to no opposition. Perhaps this bloodshed was not in vain. However, as t'was I who gave you the command, I must bear the responsibility for your results. Though I cannot help but wonder, was there truly no better way this might have been achieved? At any rate, I pray you to return to Empress Nadinia and apprise her of your doings. I must remain here to ensure no further squabbles arise. What say we report back to Empress Nadinia? Her Majesty ought to be willing to commence the evacuation now. Of course. Her Majesty has begun her supplications. None may see her ere they conclude. Stay your hand, Vera. This one may pass. 
Come hither. We would speak with you. One of our ministers informs us that you have been espied in the city, resolving the people's troubles. You have our gratitude for your efforts, which have doubtless bettered the fate of this nation and its citizenry. Your journey continues, does it not? We wish you good fortune on your travels, wheresoe'er they may take you. Yet, ere we part ways, we would make another request of you. It regards Lord Phasus. Though we have implored the man to join the evacuation, he has staunchly refused to leave this land behind. We thought that he might be more inclined to heed your words, as our own have fallen on deaf ears. Would you be willing to call on him in our stead? Of course, you are free to decline if our proposal is an unwelcome one. Pray excuse the interruption, your majesty, but I fear time is upon us. I would see you prepared for the road ahead. Indeed. Forgive us, but we must take our leave. Farewell. The Batali Knights use this place to train. You're not one of us, so I cannot imagine you've any business being here. Pray, leave us in peace. Oh? You believe we ought to evacuate? Well, you've traveled far indeed to deliver these tidings. Farther, I dare say, than anyone would go for the sake of an idle jest. Hmm. If we must leave, we shall have to begin preparations at once. But I think we're a bit short on hands to attend to all that must be done. In fact, there's a rather delicate matter that I could use some help with. A blacksmith and his wife dwell on the encampment outskirts. Might you escort them here, so that they can join the evacuation? The smith, Gustava, is a man of good sense. But as for his wife... Well, suffice to say, Cleuna has always been a contentious sort. She'd have naught to do with us, given the choice, and isn't likely to take kindly to the arrival of any of my knights on her doorstep. I can only hope that she will be more willing to listen to you, a third party, as to her. And while you're taking care of that, I will see to it that the incumbent is made ready to depart with all due haste. I had no idea that such a couple dwelled on the outskirts of Volcanic Island. Were you aware, Master? Truly? I? What do you want? My husband and I are simple folk. In these perilous times, all we are- Pray leave us be, sir. I'm sorry. You'd have us evacuate with the encampment? <laughs> Why, we could never! Come what may, this place is our home. Now, now. I'll hear none of that. Stranger or no? Our guest came all the way out here just to warn us. That's the mark of a good sort, and I trust my gut. But, Ghost Offer, what of your back? Bah! I can manage a little walking. Besides, I'd rather hike a thousand leagues on two bloody stumps than lose you. Oh, Ghost Offer, how can I say no to that? Oof! Confirm this back of mine! Very well, sir. We shall join you. Would you be so kind as to escort us to our destination? Let us see our charges to the encampment. But be mindful. The path seems much changed since last we walked it. A resounding success! If I sleep on my woes, Got coin to spend. 
It appears we found a ballista. It is not how we use this, but when that counts. I imagine it would be most beneficial in combat. Well, here we are. How long before the evacuation begins, I wonder? Would you find Serenesto and tell him we've arrived? Let him know that we'll wait here till the time comes. Sir, I implore you to reconsider. Surely you can see that the situation is dire. How many times must I say it? I'll not be ordered about. Not by ye, not by anyone. Now bugger off and leave me alone. Ah, good. You're back. I'm afraid there's another matter for which I must beg your assistance. It concerns the fellow I was just speaking with. Sir Lamond, his name is. The man's something of a regular at our hot springs. I sought him out to tell him of the evacuation, but he has flatly refused to join us. I must confess, I'm at a loss as to how I might convince him. Could I prevail upon you to try your hand? At this point, he thinks anything I say will fall on deaf ears. Perhaps we might speak with this Sir Lamond. The evacuation effort stands to benefit from another pair of hands. Very well, if I must. I? What would you of me? <laughs> Not this again. I'm here to live my life as I see fit. I'll not be ordered about by anyone, cuz. You got that? Aye. I know those two. Good people. But I don't see why I should have to be the one responsible for them. Why don't ye do it? If they mean so much to ye. Oi! I heard out ye request. Kindly bugger off and leave me in peace. Take you back. So. Sir Lamond is not to be convinced. It would have eased my mind to have him join us, but I suppose there's naught to be done. The hour of our departure is almost upon us. It will be slow going, no doubt. We have wounded whom we must accommodate. Yet, come what may, I swear to see them all to safe harbor. gone from bad to worse. Another Is there a moment to be? We must try to find a moment to gather our strength. All might have been lost in the world and back. Forgive me for being a burden arisen. Thank you. This place does not have long left, I fear. We ought to get to safety, though I have to wonder if anywhere is safe now. I'd gladly accompany you, believe me. But the others here? Well, suffice to say, they won't be able to join us. Follow me, you'll see what I mean. There's a ladder here. After you, Arisen. It is a jail of sorts, this place. A compound where we set captured pawns to work. They were supposed to be digging up old ruins or some such. I confess, I don't know all of the ins and outs of the operation. Underlings like myself were given orders and little else, you see. Well, here you have it. They've been like this for a month straight now. They refuse to leave. You might as well try talking to a wall. You have more luck. I know they don't die like we do, but it seems cruel to abandon them here all the same. I never wanted to be here, you know, taking part in all of this. 
The enslavement of pawns doesn't sit well with me. I suppose that's why I can't bring myself to leave them behind. Either that, or the current state of the world helps to put things in perspective. At any rate, I've tried everything I can think of to get them out, but naught's done any good. I'm at rather a loss. The command came a month ago or more. We are to remain here, and so we remain. I implore you, Arisen. Take me with you. So they're staying here because they were ordered to remain. And they told you that, did they? Strange. I couldn't get a word out of them. I wonder why they saw fit to speak with you. But never mind that. More importantly, you've given me an inkling of the problem at hand. It was the Overseer's doing, methinks. When the world changed, that craven up and ran for his life. But on his way out, he used that artifact they call the God's Way to command the pawns to protect him. I expect that order of his is what the pawns were referring to, but why would they continue to obey when the man is long gone? Unless... Listen, friend, I have a thought. What say you have a look around and see what you can turn up? If the Overseer's command is indeed still in effect, it could be that he is lurking somewhere not far from here. Use that key to have a look around. It should open any doors you come across. Best keep your eyes peeled for the Overseer as well. I have a feeling he's still lurking about here somewhere. Pawns need only obey the true Arisen. I suspect one of those fell artifacts employed at the Coronation is at work here. It is no great shock to me. So the pawns were being held here by the power of this god's sway. Now they would be free to make good their escape. Not a bad idea. So, there was naught left of the overseer but bones, eh? I'll wager he thought to take the pawns with him to the grave. He always was a spiteful old goat. At any rate, I'm well grateful for your aid, friend. Now that the pawns are on their feet, methinks I can get them to safety. I only hope they'll heed my words as they have yours. But I'm not worried. I'll find a way to reach them in time, no doubt. My word! Isn't this the God's sway? With this, I'll be able to guide the pawns to the refuge without delay. Now there's no chance of any of them being left behind. Seems I've no end of things to thank you for, my friend. I appreciate all you've done here. I'll get the pawns to safety, don't you worry. Tis strange to think a god's way would be used to guide my brethren to safety. After all the woe they have caused us. Mayhap was somewhat overdone, but no matter. Will someone not explain what is happening? In truth, I cannot help but fear what lies ahead. Yet I shall defend our master's world all the same. Your Majesty. How glad I am to see you safe. Where have you been this past month? The end of the world. Are things truly so dire? Though, I am aware of the dragon attack on Melv. We received word that naught but a smoking ruin remains. T'was a tragedy, and I would not see it repeated. However, without a clear path, we and the guard shall be hard-pressed to forestall the impending crisis. You would have me evacuate the city? I see. Mayhap t'would be for the best. Ever since the fall of Melv, the citizens of Vernworth have lived in fear that their homes are next to be assailed. If there is safe harbor to be found elsewhere, I believe we have naught to lose by seeking sanctuary. But I doubt I could convince the people of this city to abandon their homes, however terrified they may be. 
Methinks your majesty would do better to ask this of the Regent King. After the false sovereign vanished and the world was altered, his grace has been the one keeping order here in Vermont. If the people will heed anyone, tis him. Tis admirable how Regent Kin Sven has taken up command of the kingdom. We would be remiss not to offer him our aid. Of course. So you've come. I'm glad to see you. Captain Brandt has already apprised me of your proposal. A full-scale evacuation of the citizenry. Truth be told, I had reached the same conclusion. So long as we cow within these walls, we must live in fear of going the way of Melv. My ministers have approved the plans, and I have petitioned the encampment survivors and the Thieves' Guild for aid. The only remaining obstacle is my mother. She has set herself stubbornly against any such flight. I have tried to make her see reason, but of late she has taken to shutting herself in her chambers. However, I cannot bring myself to leave my own mother behind. If I cannot convince her, I mean to remain here and share in her fate. Now, there are a few matters I must attend to before we can evacuate. We will require several ox carts to carry the sick and aged out of the city. Might I prevail upon you to petition the merchant at the ox cart station? It, you may assure him that the royal treasury will foot any and all expenses. I'd buy a if I an elf. Be gone with you, ruffian. These carts are mine. I paid good gold for them. And if you think I'll surrender a single one, you'd best think again. I require the use of all of them to transport my wealth to safety. Fie! My spirit! What are you doing? Put that away! No! Spare me! I pray you! I fear for my life. Well, reckon he won't be coming back here in a hurry. As a matter of fact, I'd like to thank you for that. It didn't sit right, see? Having my wares claimed by some puffed-up minister trying to save his own skin. Anyhow, as long as I've got my gold, who takes the carts is no concern of mine. And if that craven comes crawling back, I'll tell him bandits took them. Minister Allard has fled. And good riddance. I doubt there ever was a more cravenly character in all Vermond. Right you are. Yes? This was in Mother's room. I did wonder where it had gotten off to. But why would she... Hmm. There's aught inside. Tis a... letter. I... Might you excuse me? I would speak with Mother. Mayhap there is hope of changing her mind yet. All she did, all the scheming, all the plots, twas all for me, you see. So I... I cannot leave her to her fate. Mother, I must beg your forgiveness. I believe that you desired to make me sovereign solely for your own benefit. Yet in truth, you sought to better the lot of our people. Ah, but I would have benefited. And handsomely at that. Besides, I cannot deny that I was proud. I wish to see my own son on the throne, and even so, I cannot help but feel that all of this could have been avoided. Had I only been more attentive, if I had but better known your heart, I could have shared in your burdens. You would not have had to suffer alone, and perhaps together we... Oh, Sven. Mother, I beg you, join the evacuation. You need not fall with this city. I would not see you take your crimes wholly on your own shoulders. 
That weight is as much mine to bear as tis yours. My son, you truly would make a fine and goodly ruler. Your kindness will save many lives. Ah, you've returned. How fares your procurement of those carts? You do? My thanks. That puts paid to the last of our preparations. I will inform the citizenry forthwith. You saw the sky fall, I trust. I doubt you could have missed it. And wherever the sky falls, a dragon soon appears to lay waste to the land. Or so I had assumed, after what befell Melv. Yet aught here appears to be different. Has our ruin been forestalled, or merely postponed? I must examine that creature may well be the key to unraveling the origins of this cataclysm. The path through this rock has been sealed to us. There's naught for it but to search for an alternate route. Many paths are close to us now. On account of the dragon's descent, no doubt. Confound this obstruction! But I suppose I ought to have expected this. Answers were ne'er so easily won. A singular creature. Is this what called the monsters forth? I should like to capture it and bring it back to the lab. There is much that might be learned from it. My lifelong work hold no meaning any longer this morning. Why did you destroy it? The secrets we might have learned! <sighs> Never mind. You've your charge, tis true. And the fiends appear to be falling back. But I trust you won't object if I take a sample of its remains. After all, your role is to save this world, and mine is to pursue its secrets. Though this land has seemingly been spared its destruction, there is no guarantee of safety. The oceans yet cloud the skies, and monsters swarm in ever greater numbers. As it will be difficult to continue my research under such conditions, I have decided to evacuate. I only hope that this sanctuary of yours will prove more conducive to my work. Strike it! Do not waste this chance! 
The Red Cloud's advance is halted. This reprieve may be a temporary one, but I'm glad for it all the same. Lamentari. Kiriando an mindor hiroth, arta hir kurir, morfa erando amanda kil. Lungtena peli telume, on the vana al vekil, et ler ne an ler ailame. Fionar elwe arfarne nenwen sur orne? Al carwa fir nun eldaia menelume sur carilm? Vanalin hiror sorom, sorne an famelton, nun dis amanda kil angadur femor. A moment long awaited. Making this a place of refuge is a splendid idea. It is safe and apt to become quite cheerful once a crowd settles in. You have my support. Challenge such a theme would be no mean feat. I hope we need not attempt it any time soon. Do not waste this chance. We must press home our advantage. There's something very queer about that dragon. We must make it. However, peace can do. I've got hold of the enemy. Plenty. Creature is defeated. Here's hoping this will be enough to forestall the Red Cloud's advance for a while. I see you do not relent. Your persistence is most intriguing. What it, alas, would that the world had not come to this. For I am certain that your tale would have been a glorious one. Yet, it was not to be. You need only cast your gaze upward to glimpse the futility of your defiance.
worlds uncountable created, only to be snuffed out by candles by the cold breath of oblivion. Eventually, the great whale tired of witnessing this. It sought to overturn oblivion by granting unto it a law, a duty, an identity. I speak. Great will does the dragon create a cycle, allowing it to forestall the end of this world time and time again. Yes, Larissa, this world has been safeguarded by the dragon all along. You yourself were chosen to form a part of this cycle. The Arisen is selected by the Great Will to play the role of the Dragon's counterpart. That is how this world is built. The Dragon serves to continue the cycle, and the Arisen exists to oppose it. This is the true meaning of the Dragon's law. Everyone in this world had a role to play. For a well-crafted tale has no excess. There must be a reason for each character's inclusion. now risen. I am no longer a mere vessel. Your great will has imbued me with a lesser will of my own. Will is power. It is the means to shape the world as one desires. to unfold. Yet, 
It seems I will not be there to watch it.